Welcome to Life as God Intended, where we explore how to live a life truly aligned with God's purpose. Today's broadcast was inspired by someone that I met here in Waikiki, Hawaii, and they asked me if I would do a teaching on how to experience life. And so from that study and prayerfully considering how I would approach it, I've come to the title of Embracing Change, a Faith-Based Approach to Life. Embracing Change, a Faith-Based Approach to Life. And I'm here at a beautiful mall here in Waikiki Beach at this beautiful setting here. And I hope that uh, you'll find this uh, helpful, this teaching. So let's take a closer look at how understanding uh, and transforming our approach to life can lead us to an existence that God intends for each of us, which is life as God intended. And so understanding your approach to life when you stop to think about it, we all have a unique way of living our lives, don't we? We certainly do. It's our personal philosophy, whether you would have thought of it that way or not, it is personal philosophy. And this philosophy is like a filter for our decisions and actions. And it shapes our values, beliefs, and the experiences that we go through especially when life throws those curveballs at us. You know what I'm talking about. You may have had a curveball thrown at you recently. But here is the thing. Our approach to life is influenced more than just by our past and the current goals that we may have set for ourselves. Whether we've realized it or not, there is always a spiritual influence at play. You see, our lives are guided either by a divine influence, God himself, or something entirely other. As it says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Well, Paul couldn't have said it any clearer than that, could he? And so the question that we should be asking ourselves is, who is really in control of your life? And one of the ways that you might get some idea of who might be in control of your life is how you spend your time, your money, how you manage your relationships can, can really give us a great clue as to who might be in control of you. For example, if you are constantly stressed about finances, it seems like these days most people are, is that because you are relying on your strength instead of trusting in God's provision? Remember, Philippians 4.19 states, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. I think many Christians have forgot that. Certainly it has to become a a practical thing in their lives because they're still worrying about their financial prosperity. So when you realize that your approach is not giving you the results that you want, it's time to change. But the real change is not just about tweaking what you do. And I think that's what most people have attempted to do when they talk about change. They're just trying to, to, to tweak it a little bit. No, it's more than that. It's about understanding why you do what you do. And many times that's a mystery to folks. They're not even sure why. 
as Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 reminds us, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So one of the most powerful changes that you can make is moving from a place of fear to a place of faith. We often make decisions, don't we? Driven by fear, fear of failure, rejection, or the unknown. But what if we allowed faith to guide us instead? Imagine how different your life could be if you trusted in God's purpose, as Romans 8.28 says, and we know that all things God works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. So think about that for a minute. And while you're pondering that verse, think about the story of Peter. I'm walking on the water, recorded in Matthew 14. Peter walked on water as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. But the moment he let fear take over, he began to sink. <laughs> and this story teaches us that when we focus on Christ and trust in him, we can overcome the most impossible situations. Now, God doesn't expect you not to be unique, uniquely who you are. He's created you the unique self that you are. And so as you think about and embrace change, it's essential to remember that you are uniquely you. That is that each one of us have developed a set of traits and patterns that are expressed through our personality. Whether it's your peace, love, or leadership skills, these traits are basically gifts from God. As 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses four to six tells us, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. So, you can see that God's the one orchestrating these things if, in fact, we're participating with him. However, these traits can also be driven by selfish desires. And so therein lies our challenge. Our challenge is to allow Christ to transform these aspects of our personality so that they reflect his character rather than our own fleshly inclinations. And that's what Paul was talking about in Galatians chapter five and verse 16 and 17, where he talks about what many people experience, kind of an internal battle. But, it, it, but this internal battle can, can also be the assurance that when we walk by the spirit, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So even though you'll be tempted by Satan through these flesh patterns of sin, the encouragement is that God is greater and you can participate with him walking through these things. So imagine that you are someone who is naturally assertive. On your own, this might cause some friction in some of your relationships. But when you submit that assertiveness to Christ, it can be transformed into effective leadership that actually blesses other people and is more concerned about others than yourself. As James chapter three and verse 17 says, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, 
impartial and sincere. Wow, maybe we should meditate on that verse today. <laughs> In conclusion, embracing change is about becoming the person God intended you to be. It's about moving from fear to faith, from self-reliance to divine, to divine relationship, from a life led by selfish desires to one guided by Christ's love and purpose. As 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old things are gone. The new is here. This transformation leads to a life that's not only fulfilling and purposeful, but also uniquely yours. Reflecting on the beauty of God's creation in you. The beauty of you as God's creation. You are beautiful because he's created you and to the extent that you allow him to function through you, that beauty is on the display to others. So may I call you to action today. If you're feeling lost or frustrated with your life's direction, and many people are, I encourage you to take a step back and to reflect. And as you do, invite Christ into your life to guide and transform you. Let him work through your unique traits and experiences to fulfill his purpose in you. Embrace the change from fear to faith and discover the peace and fulfillment that comes from living life as God intended. As Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 and 6 urges us, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Well, thanks for watching Life as God Intended. And if you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And there's well over 460 other videos for your own edification. And remember, God has a unique and wonderful purpose for your life. So until next time, it's my prayer for you that you experience life as God intended.